And we're back with another five-year plan, and this one is going to be interesting for sure because today we have Kentucky Kingdom located in Louisville, Kentucky. Now, this park was closed for a while, and it reopened back in 2014, and so they're still in that phase of where they are trying to add in a lot of new attractions. So in this video, when I try to make my predictions on what they'll be adding, it is sure going to be interesting to see how much of it actually comes true because lately they've been adding in a lot of new rides year after year. And so it's very possible they could continue doing that or they might go in a completely different direction, but we don't know. This park's future is definitely going to be harder to predict, but we will see how it goes. Now, before we get to the predictions, let's talk about what specifically they've done in the past few years. Normally, I look at the last five years, but they reopened in 2014, so I'm just going to look at 2014 to 2016. First things first, at reopening, they opened the Lightning Run roller coaster, a fantastic ride. They also brought in Fearfall, their drop tower, and then to cap it all off, some family rides and some additions to Hurricane Bay. And then 2015 comes along and T3 reopens, Cyclos is added, and again, some other great family attractions. And of course, this year in 2016, Storm Chaser was brought to life. The renovation of Twisted Twins. And even though they might not have added tons of rides like they did the past few years, Storm Chaser more than well makes up for it. This ride is awesome. Great addition to the park. So let's get to 2017. This is definitely going to be more of a family year, and we already know where all the new attractions are going to be going. They have a teaser up saying, Fun Under Construction. It's right by Storm Chaser. It is a narrow strip of land, and so I am predicting some family attractions. Some classics, like a Tilt-A-Whirl or Scrambler. And there'll just be a couple of those rides all placed directly in a row. I'm also predicting that they are going to take the old Batman Stunt Show Theater that has still been closed, this is out by T3, and they're going to reopen that and come out with a new show. And the last thing would be that the Enterprise will be closing and will not reopen next year. One thing I've heard is that throughout the next few years, most Enterprises are going to start closing down. And really, it's already started. Look at Valley Fair. They just announced that theirs is closing. Because the parts needed to maintain them are no longer being produced. And so a lot of parks are going to start closing theirs. And if they want a new one, then they can just get one of the newer models, like Catwoman Whip at Six Flags Over Texas. And so it won't be surprising when Kentucky Kingdom decides to close theirs as well. Moving on to 2018, I think that this is when we're going to see our next roller coaster. And I think Kentucky Kingdom's going to go big. Now, as we know, Kentucky Kingdom does have a height limit. However, it varies depending on where you are standing. For the most part, the farther away you are from the airport, the higher your height limit. Towards the front of the park, the height limit is about 175 feet. A little bit more to the left, it's about 180. And at one point, it is 200 feet. And Kentucky Kingdom owns all of this space off to the left side of the park. And so I am predicting a B&M Hyper will be coming to the park. The height limit may be 200 feet, but they can dig as low as they want. So they can make it exactly 200 feet, or they can make it a little higher if they dig some. In true B&M Hyper style, I am predicting that it's going to have an L-shaped layout. And what this will do is this will box in Hurricane Bay. But for B&M Hyper, that's totally worth it. So you're going to have the station off kind of near the pavilions, and then the lift hill is going to go out with the drop facing away from the park. And the reason is because that is the specific corridor where that height is 200 feet. So they have to put the lift hill inside that corridor. And then they'll have the ride work its way around and come back to the station. This would be an absolute perfect fit for the park. It would give them an amazing top three. And even if they decide not to go with B&M, if they were to decide to work with Intamin or even Mac, something like that is still absolutely plausible. But to me, it just seems like B&M would be the most likely of options. Now, as we start to get into these later years, it certainly becomes a bit trickier in trying to predict what the parks will add. Especially since in 2019, they might build a ride that doesn't even exist yet. Sometimes that's just how it works out. So the next three years are a bit trickier, but I can see quite a few things happening. The first thing is, I think that they will want to replace their Enterprise that they will have just removed. So I think they're going to put in a second generation Enterprise. In fact, I could see them even getting one of these things before 2019. I could see it happen in 2018 with the Hypercoaster. But if we were to assume that the Hypercoaster is the only thing coming that year, then yeah, I think that the Enterprise would be added the next year. But I don't think that that is going to be the only flat ride coming. The the other thing I could see is a Zamperla Disco, one of the larger models or one of the smaller ones. This would be the family ride to balance out the thrill ride that is the Enterprise. And the final attraction I could see sounds very Six Flagsy, but I think Kentucky Kingdom could potentially one day put in a Super Loop. 
No, it's not a roller coaster, but it is a decent flat ride. The general public certainly love it. And the closest super loop to Kentucky Kingdom is Six Flags St. Louis, and that's not exactly close. Still several hours away. And so I think a super loop is very justified. I wouldn't be surprised if 2019 also saw a couple more rides, but at the same time, they will have just added a roller coaster, so maybe they wouldn't add even three rides. Maybe just one or two. But I think three is like a nice, solid number. And these three additions would certainly round out their attraction lineup. Moving on to 2020, I don't think that we're going to see another roller coaster quite yet. After all, B&M hypers are expensive. And so I think there'll be another waiting year. I think 2020 is going to be focusing on actually Hurricane Bay. Because think, they wouldn't have added any new water slides since 2014, assuming all of this came true. In fact, I could even see this year being switched with 2019, and you get the slides a year earlier. But some of you may be saying, well, Taylor, if you add in the B&M Hyper, you said that Hurricane Bay would be boxed in. Where would you add it? Well, on the other side of the B&M Hyper, you're still going to have some land. And think, because of the support structure of B&M Hypers, you could easily run a pathway underneath one of the airtime hills that could lead to more water slides. So a coaster would just kind of run through part of it, but you'd still be able to access the water slides on the other side. So that is my thought for where it would go. As for what type of slides they would add, I'm not completely sure. They do have some pretty good water slides already. And I'm not really an expert on water slides, but I'm sure by the time 2020 comes around, there'll be some sort of new water slide that everyone just has to have. If not, I'm sure they'll be able to add stuff. And finally, we have 2021. And assuming all of this came true, I think that this is when you're going to see the next roller coaster. Now, there are a couple of options that they can go with, so I'm just going to kind of run through them. Now, in my opinion, the best fit for this park would be a launch coaster. Especially something like one of those Skyrocket 2s, except the problem with that is that Ed Hart is not a launch coaster fan. He has absolutely no plans to put in a launch coaster at Kentucky Kingdom. And so I'm not going to be taking any launch coasters into account in this list, because obviously they're not going to get one. So our first option is that they could go with a wind coaster. They currently have Thunder Run, which isn't a bad wind coaster at all, but they could go with something like a GCI or Gravity Group. My only thing with that is that they already have several roller coasters that be geared towards airtime, and GCIs have lots of airtime in it, so I feel like they should go with a roller coaster that doesn't involve airtime as much. Like, it's not a main factor to it. So if they weren't to go with the GCI, one thing I know that would improve their lineup would be another family coaster. Right now, their only family coaster is Roller Skater, and if they did indeed add in that B&M Hyper in 2018, it makes sense that their next roller coaster isn't a huge thrill ride, maybe something geared towards the families. So, they could go with a Kitty Coaster, and if they did add a Kitty Coaster, they'd probably add in something else as well, because Roller Skater is kind of at that family coaster level, so they're lacking like something for the really small ones. And then the other family coaster option I thought of is that they could add in a more spinning coaster. Something like Undertow, Spider, or Laugh Track. A spinning coaster would be great at Kentucky Kingdom. Much like the Super Loop, the nearest spinning coaster would be at Six Flags St. Louis. So I think that that would be an absolute great fit for the park. So I could see one of those four types of coasters mentioned. And then the last one I thought of is one of these SNS 4D free spins. Six Flags kind of has a hold of those right now, but it wouldn't be a bad fit for Kentucky Kingdom. I could see them going with something like that and even give it a different layout. And of course, because they aren't Six Flags, they'd give it a decent theme. And that ride would be more on the thrill side of things. But in general, I think that we would be looking for something more like a family coaster. So I'm not going to say which coaster they definitely should get. But I think if I had to make a prediction, I think the more spinning coaster would be the most likely of options. As for where to put it, they'd still have some land on the other side of that B&M Hyper, or they have some land towards the back of the park that they'd be able to use. They're currently occupied by some businesses that have leased the land, but as soon as their lease is up, they get booted and Kentucky Kingdom can use the land. Now, we don't know how long they have that lease for, so there's no guarantee that in five years, Kentucky Kingdom is going to be able to use that land. But luckily, spinning coasters don't take up a ton of space. And I don't really think that they would have to remove any rides to put in this next roller coaster. So that wraps up my five-year plan for Kentucky Kingdom. I think the next five years are going to be very cool for this park. It has lots of potential. It'll be very cool to see how this park just reopened in 2014, and by 2021, the direction it'd be going in would just be a complete turnaround. It'd be really cool to see. So I want to hear about your thoughts for what you think Kentucky Kingdom would add in the next five years. What would you like to see them add? Post all of those thoughts in the comment section below, and I will catch you guys next time here at Coaster Studios.